Good. Um, welcome back. We are still continuing on um, the discussion on the building template manager and how we add all the necessary information for us to do an analysis or an assessment in the end. Um, okay, so we've we've defined a profile in the previous video, which we won't be using yet. We've saved it, it's there, and you will see where we will be using it. We can't quite do it yet. yet. Next, we will be looking at um, the Apache systems, where we define the heating cooling system um, that is used within the building. So just to show you where you can use it again, you see the Apache systems next to the profiles. You click on it and opens another template manager. So remember again, we're talking about the fact that IES works on a series of templates. It basically sets up a basic file and then from there you just link it up to the various files. So again, it's got something called main system. You're welcome to use it, but I would say just add a new system. You can define it as office um, natural little ventilation. So if you decide to do a naturally ventilated building, which I think often in architecture, interior architecture, you'll be doing, um, you can't really use it to do energy analysis, so then you have to define an air conditioning system. Um, but then you can use a basic, and then and, and then if you're working with a mechanical engineer, you can actually um, get the specifics of what COPC level will be. It's a it's COP level, COPC, COP levels, coefficient of productivity. Um, and and you'll see here that you can define heating, cooling, hot water, its origin, solar energy, should you be using, any auxiliary energy, any of the air supply, and the cost and control around that. A lot of that becomes really difficult to consider, and I think difficult for an architect to work with. Um, so if you are going to say, now wait a minute, I'm simply going to look at how this building performs forms in terms of its natural ventilation. Then you can just simply say, okay, the meter, the electricity itself will be, heating would be none, which means you're not going to meet meter anything of it, of it. And then actually nothing, none of that actually applies anymore because we just simply say there won't be any heating taking place. Um, similarly, you can say, okay, if I'm going to use no air conditioning, I just say natural ventilation, and there you go. It's being naturally ventilated, we won't be considering it. Hot water is a bit more difficult to define, but I don't think it's it's necessarily always as, it's not always as much of an architect's problem in terms of designing the optimum hot water supply, because you'll just get the correct prom product. And it's not highly dependent on the, the geometry or the layout of the design, or the, even the material product. Um, often we just simply insulate it. So, so I would not use it as extensively, but if you're doing an energy analysis of the complete building, then you would want to actually um, define this in more, more detail. And um, I have some extra notes that's available for you in, in the class notes, but then we essentially say what would be the loss of energy that we have, um, what would be the temperature of the water coming in and the water exiting, do we store any water? Which means then you can actually define how much water gets stored, um, which I think in most cases we do. I don't think we'd store a thousand liters. I think that's a bit much. Many of us do simply a 200 liter tank for a house or 250. Um, and then you can also talk about, and I won't change that storage losses. I think that um, unless you've got the product itself. Okay, so. Yeah, I wouldn't change too much. I would I would rather keep it. We we know that we don't get it with 100 degrees Celsius, and often it is 60. So so those are that's um, a, a very safe assumption to make. You can then also define the solar heating that takes place. So of that hot water, do we actually start? Do we see a level of um, heating or cooling that 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 that, that, that gets undertaken? Um, I'm not going to go into detail with it now. Um, as you can see, we you, you need to talk, talk about the, the actual angle of it, the tilt of it in terms of solar exposure, the coefficient itself. Again, the, the basic assumptions here aren't necessarily incorrect. So if you don't have the, the product information that's different, then I would just simply keep it as it is.
Okay, but for this purposes, we're not really going to look at it, so we'll just say none. And then for auxiliary energy, we we, we will keep we'll keep all that. Um, um, we'll, we just won't define it in the end. So so this can be a naturally ventilated office space. There you go, saved, and we've got that out now as a as a system. You can also say, wait a minute, I do want to define the air conditioning system because maybe that is important. Then you can duplicate that and say, okay, wait a minute, this is not going to be, it's going to be office, and we will simply use air conditioned. And here I think it's, there's some basic inputs that you can put in for, um, that, 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 that's useful for, as an architect. Um, okay, so the generator, um, in terms of heating, if you're in South Africa and we are using normal um, air conditioning to heat up um, your space, then, you'll, then you'll, you'll define that as electricity. That's, that's it, it, it makes sense. And I don't think we've got our, our air conditioning is done otherwise. But you can, if you've got a, um, a, a gas heater that you'll, you'll be using, or a coal heater, or an anthracite heater for that matter. Um, then you can choose it. You can also say, wait a minute, I'm, I would like to define a co-heating, um, a co-generating plant which heats, generates both heat and electricity, and then you'll have to define all of that. What you can then do is to say, okay, wait a minute, what would be, if I use air conditioning to heat and heat a heater building, what would be the efficiency that I can define? And you'll see here you've got something called either the seasonal efficiency and you've got the CSOP, the seasonal um, coefficient of, of productivity, um, which means um, that, that's when they, you often get a COP that's quite high, but if you start relating it to the seasonal coefficient, then it's a bit lower in winter, but more efficient in summer and so forth. So it's an adjusted coefficient, but it's it's more accurate. And um, in South Africa, you can, for heating, you can use it as a basic assumption would be a 3.4 um, for an air conditioning system that's very basic, it's not, not, not necessarily adjust it and um, seasonal efficiency I will just simply keep as it is. Um, again this is now based on studies where we've looked at what, um, not me, it's studies by the Department of Energy where they looked at what basic commercially available air conditioning systems are. If you're designing with a mechanical engineer then just contact them and get the COP or this SCOP from them. Um, similarly you can then say okay wait a minute we are going to use air conditioning in this way so then we're going to define it the 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 seasonal energy use um, 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 the um, the seasonal energy use efficiency can then be 2.125 that's usually what we a basic good basic premises but you can adjust it to the specific product that's available and then um, the, the the, the, the non-adjusted would be a little bit higher, 2.5. Um, so, yeah. And ultimately, you can just adjust the SSER again as well. So, for each kilowatt hour, you actually get 2.5 out in terms of cooling. And it's still electricity, most of it is. And in the fan power, I wouldn't adjust that if you're not sure about what the implications are. So, the nice thing here is... You can get the SOP or the, the COP or SCOP quite easily, and um, it's it's um, actually an, an often available on different products. So you can use it quite easily without having to design a whole air conditioning system. But you could still say, well, I'll model the use of an air conditioning system. Remember that once you define an air conditioning system, the the, the thermal you can't really um, assess whether there's there's changes to the thermal comfort due to building um, changes or, or material changes because the air conditioning will just keep it in place. Then you have to look at energy use in the end. Um, so both of them are actually good to use. So they're naturally ventilated and air conditioned. So once you've defined that, you simply say, okay. And you can then go to your systems section. And you can see here, I have defined the building template as office. And in there, I can now define it again. The system will use the naturally ventilated system. So I define it as 
and, and, and we don't really have an auxiliary system, but you can just keep it. We're not going to look into that. And so we can go through the the the, the um, um, hot water provision. Again, we use the same system. And then there are some basic um, assumptions. You know, so if there's a heating plant, how much radiation is lost, um, which I wouldn't I wouldn't adjust in the end. I will just simply keep that as it is. And um, if it's naturally ventilated the building now. That's the only thing that to, to, to now think of carefully is you might want to then say, okay, the airflow right here is now continuously up because because we don't have it's a naturally ventilated building. If it's air conditioned, you might say, okay, wait a minute, I want to adjust it to to fit with the with, with the in the the um, occupancy schedule that, that, that is defined. Um, so you can in this case you just say off all the time and then here I would just say use your basic airflow rates that is defined by um, by, by, by the the, the SANS 10400 section O, for instance. So, for instance, um, um, I just need to find that again. But um, you you can, for instance, say let's say that you have to have three air change rates per hour. You can also change it to litres per second per person, which we know is then seven and a half litres per second per person. And and what you've now done is the free cooling flow says that's natural ventilation. So you haven't defined the window sizing yet, but you've defined how much airflow is actually flowing through this as a naturally ventilated building. Once you actually start using an air conditioned system, then you'll rather adjust the profile to, to, to you won't adjust the air variation profile, but you actually adjust the air conditioned system in the air, in the air exchanges portion in order to ensure that the flow rate is correct. Okay, so just the basics, you, you adjust the system and then you can actually adjust it in your template in the end to um, to 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 uh, be integrated into the into the final design and the assessment. Good. This is the end of this video. There's a number of more videos coming.